everyone, welcome back. I went back to the keep to see if we could talk with our prisoner, but our prisoner had nothing to say, so that was kind of a waste of time. But I did end up picking up Sagani again, because hey. we didn't really get to play around, I guess, with her that much. So I thought, why not? Take that. Whoa. One up, I pull. Okay. Oops. Let's head up there. So this is where we're going to meet the... Was it one of the tribal leaders? Wait. Oh. I don't know if I should go through with this. Make the trade deal with the Anamainfath. If a Valian deal with the Glanfath and weakens the Deerwood, it could mean war for the Republics in the future. What other option do you have? I could put the idea in the Anamainfath's head that the Republics are not interested in exclusive trade, but limited trade of goods that they do not already trade with the Deerwoodens. Um, hey man, I'm not going to say no to what you want. Follow your heart, Pelagina. That's what I do. That's why I beat so many people up. So punch them in the face. You know what must be done. Another Estramor. What do you want? Aren't you the leader of the Dunreed Rose? <laughs> uh, not Scions, but whatever, whatever they were called. Anyway, middle-aged Orlin woman stands at the back of the longhouse, an expression of irritation on her narrow features. Sigani leans in. Careful. This woman's young for an elder and looking to prove herself, I think. Oh, well, thank you, Sigani. I knew I brought you for a reason. Few Estramoran are given the freedom of our sacred city. That you ask for this person is suspicious. There are reasons we don't let you Estramoran roam our sacred city. Reasons I am coming to understand. Hmm. Has something happened? More than I care to think Looters about. have grown bolder at the sights of the builders. The people of Defiance Bay set fire to their own city. And every week, the three Tusk Stelgar bring news of more desperate settlers pushing at our borders, trying to escape their plague of Anol Fane children. Suddenly, you feel the presence of someone else in the hall. The Anna Minfoth continues to glare at you, but something has stepped out of her skin. It reaches out Permitting to you. more strangers the freedom of what? the city is out of the question right now. Go and be thankful that Anamfoth Shemak doesn't sit in the passage of the Six today. He would not be so kind as I. What is this, Theos? Theos? <laughs> Holy shit, that was loud. The vision of an Orlin man appears near Bethwell. He has the same green-brown fur and hazel eyes as she does. Help me reason with him, he points behind you. Turning, you see the ghostly shape of five other Aman... Anam... 
Those people, another Orlin with tawny fur and a scarred face, a frowning dwarf, a black furred Orlin, and two elves. You're angry about something. I hear it in your voice. What is it? Are the outrages I listed for you not enough? Trouble brews, and none of it is my choosing. The spectral Orlin takes another step from her, setting his foot down with a slow, heavy motion. Tendrils of essence drain between them, and he grimaces, grimaces and leans forward as if struggling against a gale. The angry and Minfoth winces. War. The spectral Orlon's voice is rasping, is a rasping croak. They're headed for war. Remind them of Fairwilt's warning. Hmm. Does Farewell's warning mean anything to you? Farewell's soul image gasps. Taunt threads of essence tug at him, drawing him back into the Anaminthoth. He looks up at you again. I tried to tell them. The Builder's souls have touched even the Estramorn. You'd better explain yourself. The two interesting tribesmen look from the Anaminthoth to you, their swords hands ready. Okay. Listen to what? Right now, my ears hear only your nonsense. This other Orlin, do you know who he is? Alright, well then I guess let's choose this one. There's no way you could have known this saying. Not unless you are a galoos on Anums, a watcher of souls. Yes, I'm a galoos on Anums. And a murderer. Uh, Felward tried to warn the other tribes about something. What was it? Feralt's warning came before the Broken Stone War. Feralt, my ancestor on my mother's side, was Anamfoth of our tribe then. When the Estramoric farmers defiled the Builder's monuments, Feralt urged the other Anamfotha to patience. But louder, angrier voices prevailed. Feralt believed that the invaders could be taught to respect the Builders as we do. He also believed the Builders' souls had spread to all peoples, and that we should avoid needless conflict with others. More practically, he worried that a violent response would only spur further bloodshed across the generations, and you can see where we are today. Let's go with this one. After two wars of the Deerwood, his warning is more relevant than ever. While Feralt's words were shrewd, they were ignored back then. Simply remembering his warning now will not undo the wars and the changes that the years have seen. There is blood on these stones, and that is all anyone remembers now. The image of a polished Adricute flashes into your mind. There is writing on the signs, but the image is too faint for you to read it. The Yenemin Fath turns away from you and looks at the ground, gnawing a pointed claw. Sweet. So give them something else to remember. I'm afraid I already have. Another Estramor came through here a few days ago and, well, letting him through was a mistake. One I am eager not to repeat. The Guided Compass tribe has a reputation for being too soft with Estramorin, one that will not be improved by my failure to stop this man who has desecrated our most sacred sites. That sounds like the man I came here to stop. I won't repeat a mistake in my haste to correct it. We bar twin elms from Estramorin to protect the ancient places that the builders left behind. The Builders left this heritage to us to defend, but they alone had access to it. On this much, at least the six tribes agree. You again see the polished Adra cornerstone in your mind. This time the image is clearer. Each face of the stone is inscribed to the phrase you know by heart. You feel your lips form words. A gift from the Builders of Civilization to the Guardians of their legacy. May the Guardians watch the door while the Builders keep the key. These were the words given to the keepers of the stone. 
Yeah, I know. Very well. The city is yours to explore. Tell the guard at the gate that you come to see the cornerstone with the blessing of the guided compass. If the gods have truly returned one of the builders to us, find the Delamgon of Ter Evron in what? Elm's Reach. If the gods have sent you here with a purpose, the Delamgon will know. Okay. Here we go. One of my companions, a representative of the Valiant Republics, wishes to say a word. The Orlan turns with gaze towards Pelagina. Yes, the uh, Valiant godlike blessed of Halia. Bristles and cookies spit out a response. So they say. The intimate Foth face shows no outward emotion, but her voice betrays annoyance at Pelagina's interruption. And diplomat of the Duke spells. I understand you were to be sent here with trade assurances from your masters. Reverend Anaminfath, it is true that I was chosen to convey these assurances, but understand that I was fashioned more for war than etiquette. The Olin smirks slightly. In these dangerous times, perhaps it is better to send warriors to do diplomats' work. Legina musters a weak smile. Indeed. Anaminfath, regarding the exclusive trade agreement, voice quavers. Quavers. Uh, slightly, and her golden eyes dart in your direction. Um. um I will smile warmly. The Republics feel it would be in the best long-term interest of all parties if you maintained your traditional good trades with the Deerwood. The end of Infant's long years pitch forward. A strange turn? What do the Republics want, then? Pelagina speaks quickly, but confidently. Ta'andra Tar Pearls. Trade will be picking up quickly on them in the Eastern Reach. You will buy them exclusively from us for the next five years. In exchange, we will be your exclusive market for Adra Ban and Karo Golan the same period. The Anaman Foth considers Pelagina's words for several long moments. An interesting proposition. Or <laughs> proposition. Jeez. We will send emissaries south to discuss the details at greater length. Your appearance here speaks well of your Duke's intentions. Reverend Anaman Foth. That's it. My position in the Brotherhood gone. I can't believe I just made up new trade terms to the Glanfath and Anaman Foth. Postenago. That you wanted to voice, but not the rest of that? Like, it's weird some of the things you choose to put voice in and not. You, um, you did the right thing for the Republics, even if the Dukes can't see it from their advantage. You can deal with their disapproval later. Verus. They have a saying in Biagepe. New gold clears even the oldest dates. If I'm right, all will be forgiven. If not... There's nothing I can do about it now. Yep. I'm ready. Just go with it. That's all you can do. Hmm. What do we got here? Plus seven defenses for 12 seconds. Wait, wait. Oh, that's right. We have to down the enemy. Nope. Nope. Snuffs out all active beneficial effects on a single foe. For 24 seconds. Two point rest. Two point counter. An allied target gains plus 15 deflection for 24 seconds. Ooh. Revive. Revive would also be pretty good. Revive it is. Hmm? Revive it shall be. Traveled. To oh. Uh, speak with the Delegim at Terra Evron in Elm's Reach. What about your quest? Is it just done? I guess it's done. Of course. Glad I could help her out. Okay. So this is what the marketplace?
Builder's wisdom to you. This tall woman is clad in furred hides. She settles a sharp, dark-eyed gaze on you. I hold here the best hides in Erglanfoth. Hides so thick with Stelagar. Oh, the Stelagar cannot claw through. Wow, what's your trade? I bear it on my skin. I sell hides. Okay. Yes, you do. Well, um... Just so happens, I think I need hide armor for Sagani. So, yeah. And why not? I'll buy that too. You have a lot of money. Thank you. I think she's just wearing basic. Or she's wearing fine. There you go. You're wearing exceptional leather armor. Ah, uh, maybe you don't need this. You're wearing exceptional, yeah. Well... And this gives you intellect plus two, so we probably won't do that. Uh, okay, maybe I didn't need to buy that at all. Oh well. Hail, Estramore. What's your wares, my friend? Shot collar. No, star collar. Club, flail, warhammer. Um. Palagina. Quit. You use maces, right? No, you use Warhammers. Okay. Hmm? Estramore. Is this worth it? This strike arm? Minus five uh, to all defenses for five seconds, increase speed, and is exceptional. But the thing is, like, I usually use her for her two handed abilities. An exceptional hunting bow. Plus eight accuracy and plus 30 damage. Hmm. Hmm. 8 accuracy, 30% damage. She uses hunting bows. So the exceptional will give her 30% damage, so it's a minus 15% damage there. It does give her plus 8 accuracy. Reliable is okay, but I'm hoping to, I guess, eh. The wounding plus 25% damage inflicted over time. Honestly, I think I'd rather just have the exceptional to get our accuracy up. Uh. Hmm? Builder's wisdom to you. I don't know. I think so. We'll grab the strike card as well. Get rid of that. Get rid of that. Exceptional is stock. Get rid of that. A unique sabre. Keep that. Up to Okay, we could enchant it. Let's give it a shocking lash and Kit Slayer. There we go. Hey, hail Estermore. Hmm, do I need any camping supplies? Hmm? Estramore. Don't care. Many blessings, traveler. Hmm? 
Alright. I think we spent enough money in this marketplace. I'm trying to remember where the inn is. Maybe up here? That's just a home, right? I need to go over there. Maybe there is? I thought they told me that there was an inn here. I said follow the... East? Was the inn in the, in the marketplace? Oh well. Let's go to the, um, I think it's over here, right? Elm's Reach. You must gather your party before venturing forth. Hey, what up? I come to see the blah, blah, blah. Thank you. Oh, I can also go to Old Song, too, huh? Fought the gnome, some other district, a home, a home, a big groove, the twin elms. Ah, that's where I need to go. The Hall of Warriors. Right. Hey. Huh? Hey, buddy. Of course. Alright, never mind. Well, let's go talk to that person first, I think. Alright. You have stayed true to our cause, Inquisitor, when so many others have not. For every heretic we confess, for every betrayer that burns on our pyres, new sheep continue to flock to Ivara Exensios. But not you. I underestimated you in the beginning, but no longer. You honor me, I guess. It is not for honor that I summoned you today, but for duty. Too many of our own have confessed upon the wheel and the rack and the flame. Too many of our faithful have had their minds poisoned by the Kratom Witch. The tide is against us now. We have but one option. Iavara's following must see her exposed for what she is. She must confess her heresy before my court. And how would we reach her? Not in Kratom, surely. Their lord has embraced her heathen faith and protects her with his army. But in Osionus, things would be different. The king of Osionus is a sinful man. We have helped him to see the error of his ways, and now he fears for his soul. He would pay any price for absolution. And how will we get her there? You have already done much for the Inquisition. I wouldn't ask this were there any other choice. I'm assuming I'm still playing as the role of her brother. That man who is the grand, whatever. Um, Alright, well, let's talk to the person in the next episode and continue from there. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care.